Hi booktube. So I've been gone um, more than I had planned. I didn't plan to be gone at all um, exactly, but the first weekend um, that I was gone, I had my COVID vaccine, the second shot, and I was one of the lucky, <laughs> lucky people that got a reaction to it. And so um, I had like flu-like symptoms all weekend and I was just feeling miserable, but I am very happy that I have, I'm fully vaccinated now, which, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I'm so glad about that. And then the next weekend, um, which was another bad weekend, um, was that it was a huge heat wave um, that hit Portland. I'm, I'm sure maybe you've seen it on the news if you live in America. Um, there's no air conditioning where I'm at in my apartment. And so um, it got to like 115, 120 and it was just unbearable. So I was like Googling online to see if I could find like um, a campsite um, at the beach because it was like drastically different temperatures. It was like an hour or two away, the campsite I went to. Cause luckily I did find one that was available at least for one night. So um, we, we, flew, <laughs> we flew to the ocean as quick as possible um, to escape this heat because it was just like I, Saturday I went to the beach just for the day and came back and so I had to deal with it um, overnights because um, the overnight temperatures didn't cool down like they normally do it still was like 75 80 and that was at like 5 in the morning so like for most of the night it was just really really hot and so I barely slept at all Saturday but then so Sunday we went and stayed um, overnight until Monday um, and because yeah and so yeah I, I just was not in the mindset to make videos at all those two weekends and then Luckily, this last weekend was actually a fun weekend. Um, it was 4th of July, so um, we had made plans to go up to Seattle, and I didn't really do any of the touristy things like the Pike Market um, and things like that. Um, I went mostly for the hiking um, in the mountains, um, um, and maybe, maybe I'll um, find a way to insert some clips or post them on Instagram. Um, I went to some waterfalls and some really like gorgeous mountain views and um, I did do some um, shopping in Seattle, um, book shopping that is, and this was actually Fable's first um, time going into a, a bookstore because um, I went to Elliott Bay and one other one that allowed dogs and so um, <laughs> she, um, I could tell that she for sure right now is in the mindset of she's built for motion, like she does not want to sit still right now, she, I mean, she's still just a year old, she's a little bit over a year old and so me standing still for too long of a period, she was getting kind of antsy. Like she would lay down and kind of like sigh and like just look around like, come on, you know, let's go. So I didn't spend too long uh, book shopping, which was probably a good thing considering I have more than enough books on this bookshelf. Like I have all these books to haul. And so yeah, I'm just like overflowing. So it was kind of a good thing that she kind of like nudged me <laughs> out the door. Um, and then actually one of the bookstores we went to, um, they had cats. <laughs> and so she has seen cats from a distance, but never up close. And so this store had like four or five cats. I, I swear every little corner of the bookstore I went in, there was a cat somewhere. And so sometimes I wasn't even aware of it because it kind of blended in with all the you know, floor to ceiling bookcases. But Fable was like very conscious of them. And so she did very well. I didn't. I had no idea how she would react. And so um, the cats, one in particular, did not like her. It was like a, a gray tabby and his ears were like flat down, like grumpy faced, would not, you know, keep it. He, he kept her... In their, in their, in his hindsight, the, uh, in his eye, <laughs> I can't talk, um, in his uh, uh, light of sight the whole entire time. So like once we encountered this one cat, when we went to different areas, the cat would follow us like, you know, craw crawling around. Even when we went to go out the door, um, she was like, uh, Fable was like looking at something. What are you looking at? I looked down on the floor, like in this little like um, hidden corner, like underneath the bookshelf. The cat was like watching, <laughs> watching her like, you better get out of here. So um, that was that was interesting, but she didn't bark or anything, which was which was great, or like chase them or anything like that. Um, so yeah, those were my three weekends on why I haven't filmed any videos. It's been an eventful, um, <laughs> eventful time. And then during the week, I've been so busy at work um, that I was like, oh, I need to you know film videos on the weekend. But each weekend, it was just like defying me. So yeah, I'm, I'm here now, and I'm gonna talk about my July TBR. This isn't all the books I'm gonna be reading, but this is like for sure what I'm gonna be focusing on. So I'm gonna start with uh, Jane Austen July. And the first one is, of course, full of, um, <laughs> you can't really see it because of the glare. I'm going to see if I can turn it down and see if that, that helps. Okay, so the first one is Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. Um, I've read this a couple of times. I think it's either two or three times I read it. So this is either my third or fourth time. And I love this, um, this book. This is my favorite Jane Austen book. Oh, it's just like, I think it's like turning itself back on. I mean, back up. Let me see. Turn it back down again. Okay. 
And um, <laughs> uh, so yes, I for sure wanted to reread this. This is my favorite one. I'm probably gonna rewatch um, the movie and the BBC um, adaptation because I've only watched the BBC adaptation once. And so there is this one. I don't really wanna, I don't think there's even need to explain this book because I think most people either have seen the movie or know something about it. Um, and then I have the other um, one I'm gonna be rereading is North Anchor Abbey by Jane Austen. And I really like this cover. This isn't the book, this isn't the cover I have, but I just like, was like, you know, collecting my covers to show you. And I saw this and I just really liked it. And this is the first, I think, I believe it's the first um, Jane Austen novel. And yeah, this is about um, a, a woman who she's reading, um, she's reading a, a book and it's like really um, kind of taking over her life because now she's like applying it to reality when that's not the case in this house that she's staying in. Um, but along with these two books, I um, happen to see on Hoopla. And I don't know, I think I was looking for like Jane Austen adaptations, retellings, things like that. And I stumbled upon these and I was just, oh my gosh, this cover is hilarious. I was like cracking up. So this is Pride and Prejudice, um, an adaptation, uh, a comic book uh, made by Marvel. And so I really want you to be able to see this cover because it's like a magazine um, cover like different article titles. So there's like Bingley's, Bring Bling to Britain, um, Who is Mr. Darcy, um, How to Cure Your Boy Crazy Sister, 17 Secrets About Summer Dresses, Lizzie on Love, Loss, and Living. Um, so <laughs> this is just hilarious to me. And so I'm going to be, re I'm reading this and this is adapted by Nancy Butler and Hugo Petrus. I then have North Anger Abbey, the Marvel adaptation. This is by Butler Lee and Phil Filardi. And it seems like Nancy Butler seems to be like the writer for these, but there's a different artist for each one. And it kind of fits the style, I think. And so we have Emma, you know, which is more of a, you know, a comedy. And so you have a different, like a comedic um, cover there. And this is by Nancy Butler and Janet Lee. And then I have Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. <laughs> no, this is adapted by Nancy Butler and Sumzy. I can't read it. It's a little bit blurry. Lit Lil. And so there's a little skit there. Um, so yeah, those are those three. And I forgot actually, oh my shelf. I should have got this down. It's, let's see, where is it at? It's probably not accessible to me. If I can move this over. Because um, I do have a Jane Austen um, manga I wanted to read and I can't get it now it's like way up here somewhere but um I will show that when I when I get to reading it so and that's another that's a Pride and Prejudice um I don't know if I mentioned, <laughs> I mentioned that a Pride and Prejudice uh manga and so yeah lots of Pride and Prejudice uh, going on this month that I am more than happy about and then um for my other focused uh books I have um because each month I'm trying to read trying to read a poetry collection and a science fiction book and so for my poetry um this month it's Lisa Grass by Walt Whitman and I have read snippets here and there of Walt Whitman but I've never read the full book I don't believe so um either way it's not like prominent in my mind so I do want to I really like this cover I um, I'm gonna be reading this and then for my science fiction, I have Dragonflight by Anne McCaffrey. And this is one of the books I picked up in Seattle. Like it was like, it was on a spinner rack, which I just love. This is like a dollar. And so I was just combing through those spinner racks. I remember the kids seeing those and it was just, it was just bringing back all the nostalgia. Um, and so this is um, the first book in the Dragon Riders of Pern. And so like when I saw a dragon, you're thinking fantasy, but this is more of like a science fiction um, series and this uh, it says um, after 10 long turns uh, Lessa was ready to come out of hiding to reclaim her birthright and to impress the young dragon queen and become were woman of Benden um, so suddenly the de deadly silver threads once again threaten all Pern with destruction but the mighty telepathic dragons that for centuries had defended Pern were now few in number not nearly enough to protect the planet in its hour of great peril um, then Le Lisa uh, hatched Lisa hatched a daring and dangerous scheme to rally support for people who had long ago ceased to exist. So yeah, there is that one. And then for my like summary type books, because it is July, um, I have Birds by the Shore. This is by Jennifer um, Ackerman, and I've read several, several of her books. She wrote The Genius of Birds and um, a couple of other ones, and they're all bird related. They're just fantastic. And so yeah, this cover in particular, I need to take this to the beach and read it. 
Um, but this is, it says, um, <clears throat> for three years, <clears throat> Ackerman lived in a small coastal town of Lewis, Delaware, in a sort of, in a sort of blue water, white sand landscape that draws summer crowds up and down the eastern seaboard. So yeah, these are all the birds she encountered there. And is there sketches in here maybe? Yeah, okay, yeah, there is. Um, you can see that. So yeah, this will be lots of fun to read. And then I have Other Minds, The Octopus, The Sea, and The Deep, um, the deep Origins of Consciousness by Peter Godfrey Smith. And I love this cover. This is just fantastic. Um, this is, um, although mammals and birds are widely regarded as the smartest creatures on earth, it has lately become clear that a very distinct branch of the tree of life has also sprouted higher intelligence in the, uh, the cephalopods, the squid, the cuttlefish, and above all, the octopus, plus, are the closest we will come to meeting an intelligent alien. What can we learn from the encounter? And then I have um, a Cape Cod book. Um, this is The Big House, A Century in the Life of an American Summer Home by George Houck Holt. And I feel like almost every summer I'm reading a Cape Cod book because there's just so many fantastic um, books set there or, you know, nonfiction books or fiction books and all that. And so this is a nonfiction book about... Um, um, a family is faced with the sale of a century-old family summer home where um, they have spent 42 summers there. And so George Howell Colt returned for one last day with his wife and children. Um, it's a tribute to the 11-bedroom jumble of gables, bays, and dormers that watched over weddings, divorces, deaths, anniversaries, birthdays, breakdowns, and love affairs for five genera generations that um, Anna Reeves um, interweaves uh, Colt's final visit with memories of a lifetime of summers. And so yeah, for sure this was on my summer TBR. So this is just a quick like snippet of some of the books I'm going to be focusing on this month. Um, let me know if you've read any of these um, or, or if you're going to be participating in Jane Austen July and I will talk to you soon. Thanks booktube.